Hello and welcome to lecture 62 of this series. This series of lecture on fluids and electrolytes is based on my book manual, Fluid Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find the book on Amazon at the link below. We are still on chapter 8 metabolic acidosis. Today we are going to uh, discuss the third type of renal tubular acidosis. It's hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis and here we have two types, type 4 RTA and voltage dependent RTA. As I said before, we have uh, two types of renal tubular acidosis. The kind that causes hypokalemia and this is proximal or type 2 RTA and distal or type 1 RTA. Today we are going to talk about hyperkalemic RTA and here also we have two types, either voltage dependent or hyperkalemic distal RTA or type 4 RTA which is aldosterone resistance or aldosterone deficiency. Type 4 RTA is the most prevalent type of RTA especially in adults. So we said the main two reasons for hyperkalemia is renal or adrenal. Okay. Now, when we are talking about an adrenal cause, we're talking about aldosterone. So we are talking about hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis. As you know, we have proximal tubular acidosis and we have distal renal tubular acidosis. The proximal RTA and the distal RTA cause hypokalemia. On the other hand, the hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis, what is it going to cause? Hyperkalemia. Well, it is in the name. Now, here, when we are talking about hyperkalemic RTA, they are different terminology. I try to choose the least confusing terminology. Now, focus on the least because this is a confusing topic. I'm going to try to simplify it. Okay, hyperkalemic RTA. In this RTA, we have impaired distal sodium absorption. So, if the sodium does not go in, potassium is not going to go out. So we are going to end up with hyperkalemic, hyperchloremic, normal anion gap, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now here we have two categories of hyperkalemic RTA. We have a voltage dependent RTA and type 4 RTA or hypoaldosteronism. Let's look at the role of aldosterone again. Aldosterone is going to act on the aldosterone mineralocorticoid receptor. It's going to activate the sodium potassium ATPase pump. So therefore sodium is going to go out and potassium is going to go into the cell, but also is going to affect the ENAC, the epithelial sodium channel, which is located on the apical membrane of the principal cell, which is located on the collect in the collecting tubule. Now, with the effect of aldosterone, sodium is going to go in and potassium is going to go out. So this is how potassium is excreted in the principal cells in the collecting tubule. So anything that would affect aldosterone, whether we have hyporesponsiveness, whether we have decreased secretion, whether aldosterone is decreased or we have a medication, doesn't matter. You're going to have impaired potassium excretion and subsequently hyperkalemia. Okay, we said that there are two types of hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis. It can be either voltage dependent or can be due to type 4 RTA. Now, voltage dependent RTA is also called hyperkalemic distal RTA or generalized distal RTA with hyperkalemia. In this type of type of hyperkalemic RTA, sodium reabsorption in the principal cells is impaired. Okay? This decreases the lumen electronegativity and then potassium will not exit the cell, hydrogen will not exit the cell. So what's going to happen? Hyperkalemia and acidosis. This is what's going to happen in sickle cell disease, lupus nephritis, amyloidosis, and obstructive nephropathy. Now, voltage-dependent RTA can also happen as the result of decreased delivery of sodium due to dehydration, acute uh, kidney injury, liver sources, or heart failure. Same thing, if you don't have enough sodium delivery, then you have decreased lumen electronegativity and then potassium will not exit. Remember that sodium will have to go in for potassium to go out. If you don't have enough sodium going in, then you're not going to have enough potassium exiting the cells or hydrogen 
and in that case you're going to end up with hyperkalemia and acidosis. So this is the voltage dependent RTA, okay? So we said again hyperkalemic RTA can be either voltage dependent or type 4 RTA. What about type 4 RTA? Here again, and I apologize, I know it's complicated, you have to listen to it and refer to it more than once. Believe me, I still refer to the classification every time I, I come across a case. It's not easy. Type 4 RTA is by definition hypoaldosteronism, and hypoaldosteronism can either be due to reduced aldosterone secretion or due to aldosterone resistance, reduced aldosterone responsiveness, okay? So, the first possibility is type 4 RTA due to reduced aldosterone secretion, okay? This is what we see in diabetic nephropathy due to hyperinemic hypoaldosteronism. This is by far the most common type of type 4 RTA, okay? You're going to see a lot of cases, okay? Patients with diabetic kidney disease, even earlier stages, stage three, maybe with hyperkalemia. Why? Because they have hyperinemic hypoaldosteronism, and this is called type 4 RTA, okay? Now, the same reason, okay, uh, for, for this kind of RTA can be seen with RAS inhibitors, so with ACEs, ARBs, directrine inhibitors, calcineurin inhibitors. Calcineurin inhibitors are what? Uh, Prograf, tacrolimus, and cyclosporin, and non sort of anti-inflammatory medications. Adrenal insufficiency, of course, is going to cause a reduced aldosterone secretion. It's not common, but we really have to make a diagnosis. Again, if you just suspect the diagnosis, give the patient normal saline, usually they're, high, they're hypotensive, they're in a shock, and give them hydrocortisone. Maybe start with 100 milligram IV Q8 hours. You can save someone's life. But probably you're going to see more adrenal insufficiency in people who were on corticosteroids and, and now you, they stop the corticosteroids suddenly or they wean the, the corticosteroids uh, so fast and then you're going to end up with adrenal insufficiency syndrome. So remember that, normal saline plus hydrocortisone intravenously. Okay, chronic heparin can cause type 4 RTA, but it's really not common. Even less common is pseudohypoaldosteronism type 2, also called familial hyperkalemic hypertension, also called Gordon syndrome. Here we have hyperkalemia, hypertension, fluid overload, but normal kidney function. Now, the uh, disorder is autosomal dominant, and usually it's due to mutations in the WINK4 and WINK1 kinases. We talked about those when we talked about the aldosterone paradox. I'm going to provide a link to that lecture. And treatment is with uh, thiazide diuretics. Now we said type 4 RTA can be due to either aldosterone resistance or due to aldosterone decreased secretion. Now we discussed reduce aldosterone secretion. Now, what about mineralocorticoid resistance or reduce aldosterone responsiveness? So when do we have resistance to the effect of aldosterone? So we do have aldosterone, but there's resistance. So this is what happens with potassium-sparing diuretics like spironolactone, eplurinone, trimethoprin, which is a blocker of the epithelial sodium channel. Okay, remember this on a test question. Someone maybe with a little bit of chronic kidney disease, you start them on Bactrim for urinary tract infection, and now they have hyperkalemia. Why? Because of trimethoprim. Why? Because it blocks the epithelial sodium channel. So what then? Again, sodium doesn't go out. I'm sorry, sodium doesn't go in, so potassium will not go out, and you end up with hyperkalemia. Pentamidine does the same thing. We have a rare disorder. It's called pseudohypoaldosteronism type 1, not 2, type 1. This is a rare cause of resistance to the mineralocorticoid effect. Here we have hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, but we don't have hypertension like with type 2. We have salt-wasting nephropathy. This is autosomal recessive and due to mutation in the three subunits of the epithelial sodium channel. Now, again, in pseudohypoaldosteronism type 2, which is Gordon syndrome, you have hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, and hypertension. With type 1, you don't have hypertension because you have salt-wasting nephropathy. How do we treat hyperkalemic RTA? Well, first, if we can treat the underlying cause or stop the offending medication, that would be the way to go. Now, we should manage hyperkalemia. When we lower potassium, we increase ammonium production. 
And that will allow us to continue some medications that may have strong indication, such as ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. How do we treat hyperkalemia? Well, low potassium diet, administration of potassium binders, and maybe alkali, like sodium bicarbonate. Uh, don't forget that we have two new potassium binders, pterimer and sodium zirconium cyclosilicate, and they are suitable for chronic use. They are called Veltasa, pterimer, or Localma, sodium zirconium cyclosilicate. Patients with hypertension or hypervolemia, or both, may benefit from diuretics, such as a loop diuretic or a thiazide, because both will lower potassium. Patients with aldosterone deficiency may benefit from fluidocortisone at a low dose, like 0.1 milligram daily. However, you cannot have hypertension because fluidocortisone will worsen hypertension. So if you have hypervolemia or hypertension, and unfortunately many of these patients do, you cannot use fluidocortisone. Fluidocortisone is fluorineph. Um, to treat the acidosis, we can add alkali, sodium bicarbonate. Adrenal insufficiency requires... Uh, treatment with uh, intravenous fluids and uh, corticosteroids. So the acute uh, insufficiency, you give saline and corticosteroids. For chronic insufficiency, uh, you give uh, corticosteroids. Sometimes you even have to give mineralosteroids. I'm going to stop here. In the next lecture, we are going to compare in detail proximal, distal, and hyperkalemic RTA. I'll put it all together for you.